Trump continues to publicly savor the outcome of the summit in Singapore. But not everyone is jogging a victory lap with the president. Critics say Mr. Trump gave away much more than he gained. KCAL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan here now with late reaction and details from members of Congress from both parties. Dave? And also from the president who's uh, tweeting at 20,000 feet or maybe 30 or 40,000 feet actually that is uh, because he's already defending the summit against the critics. Tonight the debate is on that was the Singapore summit an international TV reality show with plenty of drama and theater but not much substance. Or was it the launching pad for a new reality between the president of the United States and the North Korean dictator that will yield serious changes in a more peaceful world? Tonight, President Trump tweeting his response from 40,000 feet. On the long flight home from Singapore this evening, President Trump had plenty of time to tweet, and he took full advantage, firing off a long series of tweets celebrating and defending the accomplishments of the summit. The world has taken a big step back from potential nuclear catastrophe, he tweeted. No more rocket launches, nuclear testing, or research. And he followed up with this tweet. A year ago, the pundits and talking heads, people that couldn't do the job before, were begging for conciliation and peace. Please meet. Don't go to war. Now that we meet and have a great relationship with Kim Jong-un, the same haters shout out, you shouldn't meet, do not meet. The tweets echo the offer President Trump says he made to North Korea and its leader, Kim Jong-un. A lot of goodwill went into this, a lot of work. At the end of a day-long summit, Trump and Kim signed a joint statement that called for better relations, peace between the two Koreas, and denuclearization. The White House says inspectors will monitor North Korean compliance with the agreement, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will lead the negotiations over the details of the process to dismantle the nuclear warheads. But the president also revealed a massive concession which the North Koreans had been demanding for years, calling off joint military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea. We will be stopping the war games, which will save us a tremendous amount of money. The announcement caught South Korean and U.S. military officials completely off guard. CBS News reports they had no idea this was coming. And while the president had lavish praise for the summit, declaring it a diplomatic success, critics charge it leaves a lot of questions and empty spaces. Despite generic pledges to pursue denuclearization, the summit declaration was short on details and contains no timetable and no specific means of verifying that North Korea is in fact getting rid of the nuclear warheads. What the United States has gained is vague and unverifiable at best. What North Korea has gained, however, is tangible and lasting. By granting a meeting with Chairman Kim, President Trump has granted a brutal and repressive dictatorship the, the international legitimacy it has long craved. And there are plenty of doubters who question whether North Korea will follow through with their part of the deal. After all, they've made these kinds of deals before, only to later renege. Even some Republicans agree President Trump is now responsible for the outcome. He has put his entire presidency on the line here. So if he capitulates, if North Korea backs out of a deal, if they cheat and he does nothing about it, that's going to be the end of his foreign policy. Others warn the president about trusting Kim Jong-un. Working with him is like trying to hand feed a shark. You can do it, but you have to do it very, very carefully. Not to mention Kim Jong-un's atrocious record on human rights, which apparently never came up at the summit, but was asked by a reporter at President Trump's news conference. The man you met today, Kim Jong-un, as you know, has killed family members, has starved his own people. Why are you so comfortable calling him very talented? Well, he is very talented. Anybody that takes over a situation like he did at 26 years of age and is able to run it and run it tough, I don't say he was nice or I don't say anything about it. He ran it. Very few people at that age, you can take one out of 10,000 probably couldn't do it. Just last year, President Trump called North Korea's abysmal human rights record wicked and depraved. No during the summit, President Trump even showed Kim videos extolling what North Korea's bright economic future could look like, with beautiful beaches, prime territory for seaside condo development. Well, they have great beaches. You see that whenever they're exploding their cannons into the ocean, right? 
laughed. I said, boy, look at that. Wouldn't that make a great condo behind? And I explained, I said, you know, instead of doing that, you could have the best hotels in the world right there. But just in case Kim Jong-un doesn't follow through with his promises. I think he's going to do these things. I may be wrong. I mean, I may stand before you in six months and say, hey, I was wrong. I don't know that I'll ever admit that, but I'll find, a, I'll find some kind of an excuse. Now, tonight, the Washington Post is reporting that North Korea's state-run newspaper hailed the summit as the meeting of the century. And North Korea's official KCNA news agency reportedly framed the U.S. concession, calling off joint military exercises with South Korea, as President Trump conceding to Kim Jong-un's demands. Well, there will be more details coming up about the impact of calling off those joint military exercises with South Korea coming up right here at 930. Lena, back to you.